the minority in every in almost every scenario, both my undergrad and my graduate classes. And and welcome back to the Angry Teacher Channel. I'm Rich Williams, the Angry Teacher, and if education is your thing, as a student, parent, teacher, admin, anyone who has some stake in the game, this is where you need to be. This is where you need to be. All right. So hit the like, subscribe and notification bell also try to comment on something right um and so you'll be kept in the loop of the of what we have to do here in this channel um today i'm just going to talk about a couple of things it's not a very long video it's just something that caught my eye recently and it's at the end of the year and i had a conversation with a co-worker about you know some of the new teachers who happen to be black and I'm just wondering about some of the things that cause us to leave, you know, why black teachers walk away from the profession. And some of us, you know, in some neighborhoods it looks like all we have are black teachers, but nationally it's not it's not a big it's not a large number. So um just wanted to kind of talk about that today. The toll of microaggressions, you know, used in the workplace. And I'm sure it happens in every field. But for the most part, for black teachers or teachers of color, things are the racial epithets, the jokes, the comments, things are said. And, you know, we take it tongue in cheek because, you know, we're, we're trying to be friendly or polite. But there's some things that are said. Maybe not highly offensive, but offen offensive enough that, you know, had we said it, that we said it instead of the other person said it, it would have been a problem. Um, you know, well, you know, how we're all, we, you know, and some of us do it to each other, you know, as well. But, you know, you guys are always late, you know, we always start this late. You know, little things that really aren't true of the whole, obviously, it's a hasty generalization. And so it's, it, it kind of digs at you after a while. And so you just walk away because why would you put yourself through that situation? Um, and, and microaggressions don't necessarily relate to only race but it could also be gender nationality the linguistics when I first came here I'm, I'm not um, I'm an immigrant I had to be nationalized so when I first came here from my from where I came from I was not necessarily made fun of but people are always trying to correct my my language because of my accent or the fact that where I came from we actually spoke actual the Queen's English and so they were trying to correct me all the time so um, that was something I had to get over and a lot of teachers have to do that too as we're coming from other countries doesn't mean that we don't know as much as you do it's just that we have an accent or linguistics are different but you know little things like that you know they keep digging at us because American English is better or different and so, you know, you have to endure that foolishness. Or you say little um, sex, sexist jokes or other types of gender-related jokes um, because you are the majority. Uh, the content and deliveries. We've been, we've been having this battle, especially in my subject area, a lot of times we've been having the battle about the content. Do we still have to read old white men or dead old white men? Um, if you're holding the well anyway but yeah we, we've also had to endure that that's been a problem the delivery one, one thing that bothers me about this is that for our kids we because they are lower readers and all this stuff so we put them in groups and we do all these little programs that some person in a smaller pod like class in the middle of Idaho or wherever where it's the population of black people is probably less than one percent and or people of color and you use that pod for a summer for maybe like two months and then you say let's go with this program and so then you sell it and you schlep it all to the inner city and the inner cities buy buy it up and you know we're forced to use it and our kids you put them in little groups and you switch them around and you do little things and then you throw a standardized how to take a test or a white way to take a test if you will um, or the majority how to take a test. You sit down by yourself for an hour, an hour and 30 minutes or two hours or whatever. Some of these AP tests are exact, extremely long or even if it's just like the ACT, SAT and you time them. You do all of that stuff after you've 
their entire education has been in a group with people and they're learning and they're having fun and they're moving around because it's, it's researched that the people of color, they learn a certain way. So <clears throat> we've delivered your content in a, the way that you said and then now you're testing it the way you want. I find that as a problem, but I'm going to leave that alone for that because that, that part wasn't the reason for this video. So those are some of the, the reasons why the toll of microaggressions they take, they take on us and we, we kind of, after a while you just can't take it anymore. So you walk away. Number two, discipline, the invisible tax. Now it's not as explicit as the microaggressions, although microaggressions are not necessarily explicit all the time, but it's there and we have to, you know, realize that it is. The challenging positions. I tell the story all the time. I wanted to be in, uh, an administrator at some point and I'm going to make a video for that. I keep promising. Um, but I changed my mind because at the time when I was going for it, I would have been that guy who would do discipline in the building. I would be that guy who would do custodian, you know, be over the custodians, be over the security as the black male. And that's another problem. We're being stereotyped. We're, the expectations of black leaders or black teachers is just you have the black kid who is um, going through something. You can address that because obviously you're a black too. Or um, if there's a a, 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 per, a a white student who's acting up, you can handle that because you guys are good with discipline. I'm like, you know, I do also like curriculum. It's just a thing that that's, that's what I do. I like planning lessons, but no, nope, you'd be the one that's you're gonna be over this. You're gonna be over the the fixing of the building. You're gonna be over this, and so you know that's one of the reasons why you know I just let it go because that's just the expectations. Um, societal discipline, the social. Uh, this is how you you dress for success, and you know I've taught at several different schools. Some in the inner city and some out, and the, the 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 expectations are different for how you carry yourself, how you dress. I've had literally been at a school where they could, where the, the teachers wore jeans every day, and you know um, they were in t-shirts every day. And you go to other schools and we're expected to wear ties and dress up and and, and be in the, the the blazers and all this stuff and. It's just an expectation, an unnecessary expectation because, and the settings where, you know, we send black teachers and, you know, it's because, okay, because they're your kids, they're, they look like you, so you can handle them. So we send you to those settings, those sites where it's high poverty and so, it, you know, you can reach them. White people have to deal with the poverty too. You don't send us to, and when you do send us the one or two of us to those um, different sites with, I guess, in a richer community, social socioeconomic community, the parents are allowed socially to bully, you know, the, the black teachers, or they question the black teachers' choices of, of material and how we teach and what we teach and the way we teach. So, you know, society has contributed to the, the, the underlying disrespect that we get as teachers. And so, you know, a lot of us people of color are walking away from it. There's no one to lean on. 13% um, of the U.S. population um, are black folk, and only 7% of those are black teachers. And it's falling, you know, as we speak, because people tend to think that it's only because of the money, but that's a part of it. If I can't feed my family, why am I getting into it? And you know, I, I'll, I'll leave that alone because that ticks me off too, but I'll make another video for that about the money. It's not all, all the only reason we go into this is because we're not respected as a, as a profession and then you're not paying us. And then we have the added la layer of black folk being disrespected. Um, there are laws and, and benefits that do not apply to black educators. For example, in my state, my beautiful state of Florida, and I think at this time it's about 13 others, I'm not sure of the numbers right now, but they have passed a law that you can, we can't teach uh, critical race theory 
because it adds to the, and, and this was kind of what's hinted at, it adds to the message that America has a tarnished history. We knew this, but now you don't want us to tell our truth or what actually, or how America has gotten to this point and what we can do from here on out. It's been, it's, it's a law. That means you're literally telling me that my voice, my past, my being is not accepted or not as respected as others are because we want to keep the whitewashing of America the way it is so people cannot see us as that country. Instead of them seeing it as that country that's trying to change and trying to do better for the people that are, have helped build it and have been a part of it for 400 years, what do they do? They try to make a law to outlaw our teaching our kids about ourselves. And, and, and by our kids, I do not mean just black kids because they're all our kids and they all need to know that this is what America is and how it is and what we can do to move from here on out. But, you know, that's one of the laws and, and that's one of the reasons people walk away. Why am I teaching from your perspective only to the kids that look like me or don't look like me, but they're all our kids and you're telling me I can't tell them anything. And parents are driving this as well. So that's another thing in this country that's forcing black teachers out of the classroom. And that's one of the reasons I created the channel because I don't see a lot of teachers like me. There might be a couple of black female um, YouTube um, t teacher vloggers, but they're not a lot of males, and if they are, they're for the little folks. There are no high school teachers that want to dabble in, the, in the, the, the arena, and I'm trying to do that because I believe we need to be represented. It makes me, I went to a college where I was the black male in every class, I, the only black male in every class sometimes. Um, I was mostly the only black male in an English class, the only black male um, from another country in a class. I've been the minority in every, in almost every scenario, both my undergrad and my graduate classes. And that's one of the reasons I don't want teachers to feel isolated. And so that's why we created this. And um, I just think when I saw this, uh, this article, I just thought, it was time that I addressed this because we can't lose anymore. We have a lot more people of color. We add something else to the classroom that other countries don't have. There are some countries who are just... They just have one type of people. And we have all this, this, this color and, and, and culture and, and heritage and, and all these, this, uh, this array of different differences. And we're not capitalizing on it. We're, we're not using it to our advantage. And I think it's, it's to our detriment, America, we've got to do better. We've got to look at the fact that we have all these people of color in our country and we need to cater to them and have them get back in the classroom and teach our kids so that we all can move on to the next um, level that America can be on. And with that said, those are just um, some of the reasons that this person came up with and I'm just relaying that to you. And some of the things I agree with, most of the things I agree with. And it's disheartening, but we gotta do this. We, we gotta move on, we gotta get some more um, people of color back in the classroom, all right? That's all the time I have for you today. Guys, go out there and be great. Go out there and teach, 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 teach. And let's show these kids that, hey adults, we can do better. Love you all.